Cocoa beans are the primary raw material for making chocolate. They come from the fruit of the cocoa tree, native to Central and South America. The ancient Mayans would grind them up to make a special beverage for marriage ceremonies and other rituals. Today, cocoa is cultivated in the rainforest areas of many countries in the tropics. These cocoa beans from Costa Rica were cultivated without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides or fungicides. Farming cocoa organically requires meticulous care and maintenance of the crop, along with grafting techniques to help establish disease-tolerant tree varieties. The farmer cuts a budwood, a young branch about to bud, from a healthy, productive tree and grafts it onto a sucker growing from the base of a tree which is either diseased or old and unproductive. She cuts a slot at the top of the sucker then wraps a plastic strip around the budwood to hold in moisture until the graft takes. Next, she cuts a pointed end on the budwood and inserts it into the slot she made in the sucker. Then she binds the union and covers it with a plastic bag. Bagging protects the graft against two potential extremes, dehydration and excessive rain, which causes rot or fungus. If the graft takes, the union seals itself in a month or even sooner. Strategic pruning strengthens the tree and keeps it growing low and in a shape that's easy to maintain and harvest. Before long, flowers begin to bud and bloom. Tiny beetles pollinate the flowers, after which tiny pods, the tree's fruit, begin to emerge. The pods grow and gradually change color. When the color transformation is complete, they're ripe for harvest. There are many varieties of cocoa trees with pods of different colors. It generally takes about five months from first blooms to pod maturity. Come harvest time, they collect only the pods which are undoubtedly ready. If a pod isn't fully ripened, the cocoa beans inside will be acidic and bitter. They carefully cut the pod stem off the branch without damaging the tree in the process. The pod's rind is about three centimeters thick. It's rough and bumpy. They hack it open with a machete to remove the fruit inside. The fruit is made up of a sweet edible pulp encasing 30 to 50 large white seeds. These are the cocoa beans. The beans and pulp go to the fermentation area where workers lay them in boxes or heaps and cover them for four to six days. As heat under the cover builds up, fermentation kicks in. The natural sugars interact with oxygen, the pulp slowly breaks down, liquefies and drains away. The color and chemical composition of the beans change and they become less acidic and develop a chocolatey taste. The next step is to dry the beans. Workers spread them out on big trays and lay them out in the sun for about a week. Here's what a cocoa bean is like wet versus dried. The dried beans now go through a selection process. Workers examine them, removing pod remnants and any beans with mold or other imperfections. Beans which fail inspection are sold locally at a lower price or go to the compost heap. Beans which pass are weighed, bagged for export, and sold to chocolate makers. Depending on the size of the beans, which varies according to the cocoa tree variety, it takes about 300 to 600 cocoa beans to produce one kilogram of chocolate. 